Hello and welcome back to Raisin the Robins, a Carl Schultz and Athletic in the Bostic Premier Division. And we are starting today on the finances screen, just trying to have a little bit more of an overview of what's going on in the club and this that, and the other. So we do still have 20k in the bank. Uh, we are still massively underspending on our budget, wage budget anyway. We are we have a budget of 6.2k per week roughly and we're spending about 3, um, 2.7 to 2.9 of that, 3, 3k of that. But next season our wage budget does drop. I'm not too sure why. I don't know if that's because we're underspending. They're not going to give us the money. Or just because we are slumping. As you can see here we are losing money every month. And we're going to be I'm sure in the black. Uh, in the red even by the end of the season. But if we can get some more big friendlies in the in the uh, close season. And the new season. Then hopefully we can uh, you know, do something with that. If we look at the income to see if... Um, Anything interesting jumps out of me. Income this season so far is 1.5 million. Nearly doubled that on last season, which is pretty good. Our expenditure is a lot more um, last season and this season. Obviously, we're paying a few more players actual wages this year rather than. Uh, but we've got no debts, which is good. Sponsorships. I think we had a new sponsorship come in at the start of this season. Yeah, 15k. Uh, what's that? A year, I think. And projections. I don't look at the finances as much as I maybe should do. I do overspend quite a lot in most of my teams and most of my saves. But um, back to the matter at hand. So last episode we had Worthing uh, in the league. I think we won that game. Uh, yeah, and we had to cut short because uh, my daughter was waking up and I was looking after her. So we had to cut the episode short and just do the one the one uh, live com that game. But hopefully it wasn't too much of a difference or too much of a change. Um, today we do have East Furrock and Corinthian Casuals, two teams that are somewhat struggling. We'll have a look at the league table in a minute and see exactly how they're doing. But um, we'll have a look quickly now and see how we've got on since the uh, the last uh, the last episode. I just saw we did indeed win 4-1 last game. Uh, so we started off the next game, we had Brightling Sea Regent uh, away from home. We did manage to secure a 5-2 win here. We took the lead through one minute, it says two minutes, it was one minute, uh, through Omar Kroma. And then doubled our lead on three minutes through Jordan Carey. Uh, we then went back to two all. Um, basically, I think it was their only two shots of, of the game, pretty much. If we put the match stats on. I mean, they, it was. I think it was their first two shots at that point. Not shots, more shots on target, I guess. But we had the quality in the end to see it through. Um, Corboa scored from a free kick. Uh, he's really coming to form the last couple of games. He's, he's grabbing a few goals, grabbing a few assists, and good performances. Hopefully, we can see him continue. Maybe he's getting a bit more adept at the role we we're asking him to play. Uh, Kerry then scored on from a long throw and just flicked it over the goalkeeper's head. It was absolutely incredible. Great goal. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a great goal, but it was good to watch in the, in the match engine. Uh, and then Karoma uh, got his second as well. So we got two players on, on, on for a hat-trick there. Neither of them could quite grab it. But Kerry, again, he's in good form as well at the moment. He's grabbing a few goals. And uh, Karoma obviously got two in this game. But I think we've seen him ta not tail off, but not be quite as proficient. But Kerry is, is um, stepping up. So 5-2 win against Brightling C good result away from home we then had the second round of the Allens Hervey Cup not much to say here really we had Margate away from home um, we completely rotated as you can see complete man for man rotation and we just weren't the races in this game 3-0 when you look at the match stats was probably a little bit harsh we had a similar amount of shots on target they had a few more shots from it we had more possession not by much but there wasn't much in the game but it just seemed every time they got a highlight they scored it and whenever we got one we didn't or we got countered so yeah, 3-0, probably a bit harsh. Do we deserve to win? No, not at all. But 3-0 was probably a bit flattering on behalf of Margate. Back to the league and back to winning ways. A very narrow win here. Um, we did actually miss a penalty just before the hour. Kramer missed it. He basically put it... He, he, I think it looked like a penanga. It was so soft. Straight at the keeper's arms. But we did then. He got another penalty on 72 minutes. He scored that one. They... Despite the match stats weren't in the game, we didn't see much of the way of, of highlights for them. They got a lot of yellow cards, as you can see. Um, seven yellow cards, they 22 fouls. We dominated the possession, and this should have been more comfortable than it was. But in the day, we won the game. That's all that mattered. And Karoma did finally get his goal. The final game of November, uh, before, obviously before we go into December now for this, this episode, uh, Haringey Borough away from home. Again, a very good away performance, good result. We did actually save a penalty on 20 minutes. At that point, they were all over us. Every they had quite a few highlights going their way, and we were getting you know pen back. And obviously, remember Newball and Akin one day from the first season. They absolutely tore us apart both both games. Uh, didn't do that this season. Newball, Newball, Newball. 
no ball, I'm not sure. He missed his penalty. But we then uh, got the lead through Jordan Kerry about 15 minutes later. And then the stroke of half-time, Kaboa again. We're going to have a great goal for him. He's not just scoring, he's actually scoring some decent goals, whether it be you know cutting in and scoring weldies or whether it be free kicks or just general good play. He's doing really well at the moment. I'm glad to see it because he is, he is one of our better players. We need him to start performing like he, we know he can. We then had Berry Town, who we were thinking of coming back for, but obviously changed our minds when we realised it wasn't the Berry. I think it's just Berry, isn't it? Yeah, they're playing white, so yeah, should have known from the off that it wasn't them. But uh, we scored very early on, again from Papo, a corner, seven minutes in. Um, we did then concede his own goal. It was George Bentley, our goalkeeper. The shot, Their shot basically come off the bar, landed, hit him on the head or the legs, I think it was the head, uh, and bounced in, and it's given us an own, away, an own goal. And I was thinking, oh, no, here we go. Um, Dan Adams then stroke half time made it 2-1 we were fairly comfortable in that game at that point um, but then another outside the box shot just can't seem to stop conceding then when we concede it's normally one of those or I can't remember what the other type of goal is we say we concede quite a lot of set pieces set pieces and outside the box um, but then immediately Jordan Carey gets, gets one on 87 minutes 3 minutes later and then 3 minutes later again he gets another one to make it 4-2 and just seal the result that's what we needed, but 25 shots to 12 on target against their 9 and 6, 59% uh, possession. We deserve to win this game far more comfortably than we did. We just made it difficult for ourselves. The goals they scored were just absolutely ridiculous, and yeah, I mean, but a 4-2 win, back on track. Well, not back on track, we've been winning a few games in the league. Carry on track. And then the final game uh, before we get to our double header today was away at Margate. Bit of revenge for the, uh, the Alan Turvey Cup, but this, you know, this is the team that was playing... Our real team was playing in this game. As you see, Koboa gets man of the match again. Uh, he did grab a goal. They did actually score an own goal on 20 minutes. I think it was pretty much going to go in anyway, but their defender just pretty much made sure of it uh, before Ricky Koboa for 81 minutes just yeah, sealed the game out. Uh, they didn't have many shots on target. They had a good few shots, more shots than us in total, but we had the more quality chances, more quality possession, and deserved to win this game. Uh, it didn't ever really, until the last 10 minutes, feel like they were really in the game. And then they started pressing a little bit. But we held on and got the 2-0 win. And if we see where that leaves us in the league, we are second. So we're still a good, what, nine points behind Kingstonian. We're level on points now. Two points ahead of Leverhead. And that win against Margate, you can see, and Harringay, in fact, you can see how vital they are because it's leapfrog, leap, leapfrogged us above them and given us a little bit of breathing space over them as well. Our goal difference is you know, very good compared to some of the other teams. Only Kingstonian have a better goal difference than us, I think, yeah. Um, but yeah, today so we're playing East Farrock who are down here, and we've got Quinfin Casuals who are just above in 17th. So they could, in theory, be sort of drawn in to this relegation uh, situation still. Chrome is only second top goal scorer. He's on a uh, level on with who is this? With Theo Fanus of Kingston, and he is English apparently. Play for Millwall, AFC Wimbledon, and then a few of the clubs around this sort of area. Uh, very good season last season, the Bostick Premier, 24 in 35. He's carrying on this, this season. He looks like he's going to surpass that. He's got more, not as many assists, but doesn't matter too much. They're absolutely smashing it this season. Uh, assists, we've got Karoma, and that average rating is Karoma in third. We don't have anyone in the assists. So a lot of our goals, well, goals and assists, we, we're quite spread. We do have that uh, situation, so that's quite good. We, we don't rely overly on one player. You know, Karoma's up here, but Carey's chipped in. Adams is chipping in, Delaney's chipping in, Karoma's starting to chip in. Uh, we've had Dixon coming off the bench occasionally and grab a few goals as well. So, not too shabby. But we'll jump in now to today's lineup. Um, again, as always, you can probably guess who it is. In fact, no, not completely because we do have one player back. So, we'll see that now. So, we actually missed the lineups. So I skipped straight through and went to the team talk. Uh, the lineup is essentially the same as every week, except O'Connor's now back in. He's back from injury. He's played pretty much every game since we had that last episode so he's he's back and good to go and Kubo again <laughs> throw in from Nicholson drops into Kubo beats his man drops the shoulder rifles it in the far post it's it's a goal he scored with he and we are scoring quite regularly Nicholson and him are developing a real relationship he just knocks it past his man top corner far corner one nil against his Farrick okay it's the bottom team we should be beating them but we know how we get on against the bottom team sometimes. We're starting with their goalkeeper now with a goal kick. Uh, Tupper into Kaboa, finds Karoma, goes past him as well. King, can he pick out a pass? He finds Delaney, there's Kerry. 
he's in and he's in again. That's his 12th goal of the season. Not too shabby at all. Very, very good. Starting to have really pick up and find his feet and find his place in this team and chipping in with the goals. Him and Kaboa have just really stepped up these last couple of weeks where maybe Karoma has not been scoring quite as freely as he was at the start of the season. But we've got other players stepping in, which is vital. Finish it past him, but not quite. But it, he, well, we should be doing better than that. It's a long punt and we have a free... And they've got... It's disallowed, fortunately, for offside. Proposed decision making there is absolutely woeful. It's played. I'm not going to watch that. It's played over the top to no one, no, no one around him, and he just headers it straight back to them. Not too sure what that was about. We get to half time, literally nothing else has happened. We've had the two highlights with the goals, and I think they're just allowed goal. That has been pretty much the the way of the game, really. But I mean, we've got two goals, we've got a 2 0 lead. That's more than enough for me right now. If we can boost on in the second half, and maybe get another goal or two just to make sure because you never know we're going to concede so Kabo with another free kick and he's found the back of the net again another free kick this guy just doesn't score normal goals 3-0 that should be the game done with an hour, to, hour gone but as you can see here just whips it over the wall low and hard bottom bottom left hand corner Tupper can't do anything about it 3-0 and it's another free kick to us here we're starting to really turn the, turn the screw here now Koboa drops back to Nicholson. Long ball over. Doesn't quite meet his man, but O'Connor. Again, they have no one to play it to. And it goes, finds space somehow. Whereas at the other end, we did it. It went straight back to them. They managed to get it clear annoyingly. Uh, and actually counter. Uh, and get a corner here, which I'm sure will probably end up in. Or some sort of variation of causing us trouble. But we do get it away finally. Just to eat my words there. Carey, can you find Chrome over the top? Not sure how that has ended. Not how sure that has ended at all. So for the last five minutes, we made some tactical changes. I've noticed they're playing a diamond. Um, I think they may have been all the way through or certainly have changed to it. So we're just exploiting the width a bit more, the left and the right side. We've made our defensive uh, width very narrow, so we're more centrally located when we're defending, because that's where most of their stuff's going to be coming from. And we've gone to attacking like they wanted us to at the start. <laughs> and that has negated the clean sheet. Is that the right word, negated? Probably not. Um, but make sure we haven't got it anyway. It's a bit of a punt out there from Popo, which wasn't really necessary. It's not in that direction. Straight through. Popo doesn't pick up his man, and Higgy Higgins makes it 3-1 with a couple of minutes to go. The, game, the game's tied up. It would have just been nice to have got the clean sheet. But no, it's still them coming forward. It's a penalty. I don't know. We push someone. 3-2 is not a fair reflection this game. We've been absolutely battering them for... The, 80 minutes and then it's the last 10 minutes or so that has just they've decided to start playing and yeah made it look respectable when really it shouldn't be this should be the end of the game it is 3-2 closer than it should have been but it's still three points on the board and they did, they had the possession very bizarrely they were quite good with the shots but still nowhere near what we were doing and it, as in the reflection of the game we should have won by clearer than 3-2 but hey Three points on the board, like I say, is it says disappointing. I mean, I, I shouldn't have gone with that really. Um, I'm just going to leave it out. I'm not, not going to make things worse. So what we'll do, we'll come back. We've got about a week till the Corinthian Casuals game, so I'll skip through the the week and we'll come back for the lineups for that game. See you shortly. Just before we move on to the Corinthian Casuals game, an interesting little tidbit in me news um, inbox this week, and Eastbourne Borough, John Boner. As I'm voting me to pretend to be Eastbourne Borough's board, as they wish to discuss with you the possibility of becoming their new manager. The interview will give the opportunity to view Eastbourne Borough's proposed vision, allow you to put forward alterations to their board to consider, and they want to make it clear they reserve to the right to adjust the transfer and wage budget in the future without prior consultation. Eastbourne Borough are 20th in the Vanarama National South. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we want to go there really. First of all, I'd have to change the name of this series and do redo my thumbnails and everything else because this is the Cole Short and Save. I'm sticking with Cole Shorten, we're going all, as far as we can with Cole Shorten. Therefore, we decline the interview with Eastbourne Borough. Back in a minute with the Crimson Film Casuals game, unless another job interview or something strange comes up in the inbox. Watch this space. So here we are on the day of the Crimson Casuals game. Nothing else happened midweek, no other job interviews. Man United and didn't sack Mourinho and come in for me. We are still at Cole Shorten. So... Very full of, well, the front three, the only three that might not be real players, although I think they are, just haven't got pictures. 
everyone else has got a picture here. Oh, the goalkeeper hasn't as well. But a lot of, yeah, real names and face packs here and stuff like that. 4 3 3 as well, which we did used to say we used to do quite well against. But the last episode, I think we played against two of them and got torn apart by two of them. Uh, we stick with a 4 4 2, same 11. Don't need to go into it too much. You know who they are. We, I know who they are. Let's crack on. And we're going to try and get some good team talks going. They seem to be increasing at the moment. I mean, it comes with good morale, good form. I, I'm sure. So we kick off. We're in our yellow slash white kit. It's a white kit, but it shows as red for some reason. Uh, yellow for some reason. We actually played in this kit in a home game recently, which was a bit bizarre. Um, why we were forced to wear the away kit, I'm not too sure. But it's Kaboa free kick. We know what he can do from here, but we build him up now and he fails to deliver this time. He's, we, he's built high expectations for himself now. We expect him to score every time he, does, he gets the ball or does something on the edge of the box. But we keep the ball. Popo, Adams, out to Delaney. Drifts inside. Finds Adams again. They're playing a bit of tag. Pass the ball between themselves. Got a little game going amongst themselves. Oh, but Corbeau is in space. That's one man you probably don't want to give space to at the moment, but he shoots it straight at the goalkeeper. And Kingstonia have just scored, and Sanchez Watt has scored the goal. He's on loan from, I think it's Hemel Hempstead. I actually had the opportunity to try and go in for him. I don't think we'd have beaten King, Kingstonia to him. Um, but yeah, they've got Sanchez Watt, the ex-Arsenal youth player, of course. And up until a couple of years ago, he was playing still fairly high level of game. And I'm just talking here because nothing is happening in this game. We had that opening highlight that Koboa had. They're overwhelmed at the moment by what their manager said. So I think we just need to try and counter up that and just push forward. We do have a corner. We're going to go attacking because that's what the assistant said. We've got a penalty. Um, we're going to see Karoma take that shortly. Um, while we're waiting for him to do it, Poe and Kerry have got contracts in the offing. They're about to expire at the end of the season. Run the Karoma track. They've got um, yeah their contracts expire at the end of the season. They come to the same as well. They're running out in six months. We managed to tie them down to two two year deals, both of them. Reduce their their weekly wage. But chucked in the international cap and all that stuff. Kerry is a little bit worried because he play, he plays for Wales, and that is a concern that he could actually, in not too short a time, probably get capped for Wales. Bearing in mind who they might have up front at the moment and how well he's doing. Uh, Popo, I don't think is eligible for another nation, so hopefully he won't come back to bite us. He just doesn't go out and play for like Gambia or someone, and he gets a cap <laughs> off his good form as well. But it drops here. Oh, Adam smacks the bar, but we still got it. Kaboa shoots it off to defend and it's a corner. Bit of a goal mouse scramble there. And look at the league table. We're now within six points, Kingstonia. And this, this run of good form has really um, dragged us back into a title race, really, which we weren't expected or warranted to be involved in. And we go into half time here. 1 0 lead. They've done very little. We haven't done a great deal ourselves. We've had a penalty. We've had a bit of a scramble. Um, we will. There's a lot more to come for you. Nearly pressed disappointed, which would have been <laughs> an absolute nightmare. Um, most of them seem to like that. And hopefully we can kick on in the second half and just see out this game. You know, they're down the bottom, but, you know, this league, you can't take anything for granted. We've seen a lot of results against lower teams as well that haven't gone our way. Kaboa, he's got a pounce on that. He does. Now he's driving at the defence. Can he now find a, an outlet? An out, an out ball. He's still got it. I don't know how he had that much time to do it. Oh, it's out to Delaney on the right hand side here, doing it equally on the other side. But we, oh, we're going to get no one's running back. He loses it and just stops, and it's over the top. It's going to, oh, it's one all. <sighs> That's the other type of goal, isn't it? The over the top. That was it we were talking about in the last game, I think, the last match. It's the type of goals we let in outside the box and over the tops. No matter what we do, we, if I press them on the edge of the box, they knock it over us and go in the box if we sit back they shoot from the outside the area and score we literally cannot win we've just under 10 well just over 10 minutes to go we've made two subs we brought Dixon on for Carey and Corcoran on for uh, O'Connor neither particularly having a good game here long throw by King Karoma and it's in there we go so now we shut up shop very defensive we're going to go team instructions uh, in possession we don't well, we're going to go time wasting a lot. We are going to go play for set pieces. We're going to be more disciplined. We are going to. Everything else can probably stay the same. In transition, can stay distributed slowly. 
uh, and out of position we're going to go a lot more narrow um, tighter marking slightly the surgeon on the pressing get stuck in okay hopefully now for the last five minutes we can hold on and snatch another 2-1 win long throw from King Karoma gets into it and great great nod beats their goalkeeper at the near post shocking goalkeeping really but do I care do I not as they have a last minute corner do we know what's happening here of course we do oh my god it's a set piece set pieces over the top and outside the box oh. I mean what do you, there's three of them there he's the goalkeeper just comes out and there's no one there the, the tactic it's hadn't actually implemented at that point that's fantastic that's so good to know they didn't kick in from the kickoff can we get a late one ourselves here Flavian Howard back out to Nicholson oh, just don't give it away that's full time that is a very disappointing draw Based on their position, based on our performance, based on the score at five minutes to go, that is absolutely shocking. We should have had that game signed still delivered way before 85 minutes when we got that 84 minutes when we got that second goal. That is very, very disappointing. I'm going to tell them that. That is very disappointing. I kind of lose confidence. Well, you were woeful, mate, so I don't really care what your opinion is. Um... So let's see where that leaves us for next episode. I mean, we're second in the table still. We've probably fallen behind Kingstonian, I'd imagine. We've probably closed the gap between third and fourth and whatnot. So let's see. Kingstonian, they did beat Greenwich Borough. Leverhead beat Enfield Town, unsurprisingly. Uh, Haringey drew with Whitehawk. Whitehawk were top for a little while. They dropped down to sixth. That's crazy. Um, and I've just noticed we've got, I think, Northwood next, who are 21st. So we need to make sure we get back on track with that. But let's see what we're going to come back to next time. Yeah, so Northwood next. I think we've got a pretty good run. Folkestone Invicta. They're just above the relegation places. Canvey Island and Harlow. Canvey Island are here. Harlow. Yeah, so pretty good run. Canvey Island, obviously up in 12th about midway but really all four in January are winning winnable games now we've obviously had Northwood at the start of the season I think we've had folks to recently so we're going to come back for Canvey Island and Harlow that'll be next episode um, January's games yeah there might don't think there's any cups sneaking in there I think we're out of both cups now yeah and then we've got a long February uh, bizarrely for a short month oh leap year as well uh, good, good to know that's a good place to leave it, yeah. So we'll come back for the Canvey Island and Harlow Town uh, next episode. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like on there. New to the channel, drop a sub, usual usual outro. Any comments as well will be absolutely fantastic. Um, I know I've not been very good on the comments. I mean, I've not had many recently, but I've been trying to myself drop a few comments, a bit of interaction on there. And I've been a bit distant on Twitter as well. Just a lot of stuff going on in home life and stuff. So not been on Twitter quite so much and work's been quite busy as well. Um, if I'm not working i'm editing and uploading and stuff so getting on on the phone and on twitter is a bit bit difficult uh, and discord as well i've been very 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 um, distant on that as well trying to trying to get back involved in the social media and the social side of it just a bit more stuff like that but hopefully uh probably in the new year hopefully you think your things ease up uh but yeah until next time uh, for those canvey island and harlow town games i will see you later take care